welcome back. So now we're going to discuss and learn how can we compare the uncertainties of different measurements to know which is the most significant uncertainty in our experiment. Particularly if we want to do, for example, a measure, an experiment measuring speed. We'll have to take two different um, measurements, a distance and a time. Those are completely different measuring devices with completely different uncertainties. How do we know which uncertainty is having the greatest effect on our final value? So um, here are the two reading uncertainties that we actually took from our measurements. So we've got our five lines measurement of 3.95 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimetres and grass. And I had 10.10 plus or minus 0 0.05 centimetres. Now, these uncertainties, where the units of the uncertainty are the same as the measurement, and if you'll notice, folks, that I was absolutely fastidious in always putting a unit next to my reading uncertainty, whether it was separate, like these ones here, or brought together, which you always should in the end, bring your uncertainty together with your measurement, no uncertainty is stated without a unit. It's really, really common in exams that people do pretty well with the uncertainty section and knowing what the uncertainty is. But when you're asked to state the uncertainty, they don't put a unit next to it and that's it, mark's lost. It's often just a one marker, mark is lost without the unit, okay? That uncertainty is half a millimeter. It's not just 0.5, okay? So uncertainties that have the same unit as a measurement are called absolute uncertainties. So this one and this one, they are absolute. That, that is an R, by the way. <laughs> They're absolute uncertainties, okay? Now you might be thinking, well, what other possible option is there? But if we want to compare the uncertainties from different measurements, it's the unit that makes that impossible. How do you possibly compare a centimetre to a second? So we have to get our uncertainties unitless before we can do that. The easiest way to do that is express them as a proportion, percentage of our measurement. So we take our 0 0.05, divide it by the measurement, times by 100, And I get this number here. I've got a repeating dot, so I'm just gonna press SD again. And here is the answer I get. Now, if you've noticed so far, every single one of our uncertainties has been a single sig fig, okay? So it's all zeros, and then the first number that comes up, that's it, we stop. And it's exactly the same with processed or calculated uncertainties. So here, I'm gonna take the first number that comes up, and that is the one. So the uncertainty here is 1%. Okay, one sig fig for all processed, all calculated uncertainties. Let's do it. Um, so then we uh, need to state our final answer. So our distance was 3.95 centimetres plus or minus 1%. Let's do it for our grass. So 10.10 divided by 0 0.05 times 100 what have I done there oh <laughs> so <laughs> 0 0.05 I hope you caught that at home 10.10 times 100 0 0.05 divided by 10.1 little over big times 100, there we go. So this time I've got zero point something, again, single significant figure, my first number and I stop. So I'm gonna round that up to 0.5%. So 
So final distance there is 10.10 centimetres plus or minus 0.5%. Okay, and these are percent uncertainties or percentage uncertainties. Just. And of course you can go back the other way, if you start with percentage uncertainties, you can turn them back into absolute uncertainties by finding what 1% of 3.95 is, so 1 divided by 100 times 3.95, or 0.5% of 10.1, 0 0.5 divided by 100 times 10.1. And we'll practice that in just a few sessions time. Okay, so um, let's have a look at our final digital measurement now. So we make lots of digital measurements in the classroom. Uh, most notably, we have voltmeters, ammeters, and oh, TSAs. So our time speed acceleration boxes that we attach to light gates. Now, again, we often think that because something is digital, that makes it a better or more accurate measurement. And my most hated thing to see in evaluation is in the future I would have swapped this scale measurement for a digital measurement and that would have made it more accurate and that is simply not true okay it's not true just because a computer screen puts the measurement up does not mean it is better that measurement was still made by a human ultimately that human programmed it um, there is still um, errors within the device there is a limitation to that device and actually the problem with that is that you don't necessarily know what they are. You don't, there's a lot of mystery behind that measurement. You do not know how close it was to being the one up, how close it was to being the one down. You don't get to see everything about that measurement the way that you can with a scale. And therefore, the natural reading uncertainty of a digital measurement is actually larger than, proportionally um, larger than a uh, analog measurement. So for digital, it is measurement plus or minus a whole one of the smallest reading. One of the smallest reading. So let's see how that works out with our digital measurement. So we took our times and I'm simply going to use, um, for this example, I'm just going to use my first valid time, which was the 6.40 seconds. So T equals 6.40 seconds. Now, as soon as you have your digital measurement, you know what your reading uncertainty is going to be. Okay. So if this is my, my measurement straight from the screen of my uh, device, then my reading uncertainty is the smallest reading that could have been. So the smallest reading I could have gotten from this device is the first number in, in this third sig fig here, okay, two decimal places in, 0 0.01. If that is my reading, that is the smallest reading I could have gotten. So that makes my total reading 6.40 plus or minus 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, and um, here's another example. I have another digital device here. It's an infrared thermometer. And if I just take my own temperature, That's more like it. Okay, so there's my temperature, 36.5. Okay, so T equals 36.5 degrees C. So 
So my reading uncertainty is 0 0.1 degrees C. I've only been given information to a single decimal place. So a single decimal place. T equals 36.5 plus or minus 0 0.1 degrees C. What I'd like you to do now is pause this video and calculate the percentage uncertainties and just pop them next to it right here, just for a bit of practice. See you in a moment. Okay, how did you get on? Here's what I got for my percentages. Uncertainty divided by the measurement times by 100. One significant figure for my uncertainties. Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do now is go into the description of this uh, video and I'd like you to click on the link to the, uh, the small tutorial that allows you just to practice using your reading uncertainty knowledge and your absolute and percentage uncertainty knowledge um, and have a little practice of that yourselves before we move on um, to random uncertainties. See you in a bit. Thanks, folks.